All right, we are starting chapter 27, and uh, this chapter is just the closing events, um, or I should say beginning events after World War II, and is the beginning of what we call the Cold War. And you might be wondering what kind of, what the, chat, the title is about, and it just says a time of challenge and change, and it says the years of 1945 to 1959. Okay, so there's a couple words in here. That's the Soviet Union. When you hear that, you should be understanding that is Russia or Russia when it was a communist country. Um, you might remember the Allies. That was the side that we were on. Nazis were part of the Axis powers. They were now defeated as the end of World War II came to a close. So I'm going to read through the overview and a little, explain a little bit more. Um, it says, time of challenge and change. World War II was over. The Allies had defeated the Nazis and the rest of the Axis powers. The post-war period in America and Europe was a time of recovery. New world organizations were formed to prevent such damaging wars. At the same time, a new kind of struggle between the Soviet Union and the United States was beginning. In this chapter, you will learn about this struggle and the other changes that occurred after the war. So here's our goals for learning for this whole chapter. To explain the changes in the economy after World War II. So what is the economy? That is the money system. So what happened to our money system or, you know, what kind of money people were making, um, what businesses, what business was like. So we'll get the changes after that. Um, to describe the effects of the war, formation of the United Nations, the Fair Deal Program, and the election of 1948. So, um, remember that Harry Truman took over for Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, when Franklin D. Roosevelt died of, in 1945, at the almost the very end of World War II. Um, so, we're going to look at the kind of effects the war had on the country. Uh, the United Nations is still in existence today, and that is a place for countries to get together and talk about their problems instead of, you know, going to war right away. Um, the Fair Deal program we will learn about, and again, the election of 1948. Uh, to describe the beginnings of the Cold War, the Marshall Plan, and NATO. So the Cold War is basically a competition between the United States and the Soviet Union, or you might think of it as a competition between democratic capitalist countries and um, communist countries, but it's mostly those two. Uh, the Marshall Plan was something that was outlined to help out the countries in Europe, um, proposed by um, the United States, so it was a plan that was put forth by our Congress or our lawmaking body to provide money and part of it actually was to combat communism. So you're going to hear that theme of anti-communism. Even as you see in like the news today, um, people have kind of, well, I don't know, maybe you call them crazy remarks, maybe not. Um, even with our COVID thing, people are saying, you know, COVID is communism or staying at home is communism. So why do I bring that up? Um, not to make fun of those people. I bring that up because we have a fear and maybe you'd even call it a hatred of communism in this country. Okay. And then NATO, that's the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So that is also a group of countries that's made in response to combat communism. Okay, so um, we'll talk about that more. To explain America's involvement in the Korean War, you know, as the rumors are that Kim Jong-un is possibly dead, whether it's from surgery or he's sick, we're not really sure. But we're going to see how Korea, or I should say North Korea, um, is going to fight South Korea and the beginnings of that. So you know, really, history, guys, is just understanding who you are. And every single thing that you're going to read about and learn about, you're going to see impact in your daily life. And I know that's kind of hard to understand for you guys as a teenager, but really, you are just studying the world around you. You're just studying I mean, the past is, is really the present. So I just want you to understand that. And why do we study history? To make us into better people, okay? 
we're learning from the mistakes of the past or what worked and say to ourselves, how can we be better? All right. The last one, to describe America in the 1950s, including McCarthyism, the civil rights movement, family life, and the start of the space race. So um, this is like the baby booming generation. McCarthy is from our own state of Wisconsin, which is where I am in. And he went on a big witch hunt to find um, communists in the governments and in our society and finally went after the army. And then kind of that was the end of his uh, claim to fame, if you will. But Joseph McCarthy out of Appleton um, made quite an impact and quite a stirred up quite a ruckus back in the 50s. Civil rights movement, um, that is for mostly, we're talking about African Americans to obtain equal rights, which they have, but then through different things like poll taxes and literacy tests and Jim Crow, they kind of lost again. So, and when we go back to the Reconstruction era where, you know, the military was kind of ruling the South, it was, you could argue it was kind of good because there were, you know, African American uh, senators and judges and all kinds of stuff and things were changing. And then when that ended, it kind of went back to status quo, unfortunately. So we're going to look at um, things like Brown v. Board of Education and things that really changed how um, African Americans, um, maybe I can say the word behaved or were able to um, get equal rights. Okay, family life and the start of the space race. Family life is self-explanatory, but it's kind of, I don't know, kind of traditional um, American roles with women doing something specific and men doing something specific. And the start of the space race, so us, you know, going into space. That's what the space race is about. Okay, timeline. 1945, United Nations is formed. I talked about what that is. 1948, President Truman is re-elected. So, spoiler alert, we know who's going to win the election in 1948. And that's not really a big surprise because President Truman was FDR's uh, vice president and took over when he passed away. And people liked FDR, and so they thought, you know, this is a time where people weren't that divided over, like, Republican and Democrats like they are today. Um, it's kind of like what's best for the country, and it wasn't as, like I say, um, polarized as a, as a popular term right now, where people are really on extremes. NATO is formed. Again, that's the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and that's in response to stop the spread of communism. The Korean War begins. Did we fight the Soviet Union in there? Did we fight um, at all? We did not fight the Soviet Union really directly, but we did fight communist China and definitely North Korea um, directly in that. And were those two forces supported by the Soviet Union? Yes. Okay. Were they communist forces? Yes. Okay. 1953, the Korean War ends. So it's not real long conflict. In fact, most of it happens over the course of a year, I believe, maybe a year and a half. So yeah, three years, but that's not all that was fighting. President Eisenhower takes office. In 1957, Russians lost Sputnik. In 1958, Americans ex launch Explorer 1. All right, so my guess that that is about the space. So there you have it. Have it for a uh, overview of the uh, beginning of the Cold War, or in other words, um, the first years after World War II.